Hello and welcome to another Plan Mecca Tech Tips. My name is Cody and I will be helping you today. We are going to be going over a program called FileZilla. Now, why do we use FileZilla? What is it for? Well, it is a client that helps us download large files over the internet. And specifically, it is used with FTP servers. Now, if you don't know what an FTP server is, that's not a big deal. It stands for File Transfer Protocol. You can just Google it and read a little bit about it and uh, kind of educate yourself that way. This video is not really on FTP servers or clients. It's just going to be about using FileZilla to download files over the internet, specifically Plan Mecca files. Yes, Plan Mecca does have an FTP server where we host all kinds of files for you to download, including our software and firmware files, and it is a great way to access that information without downloading through a traditional um, through a traditional channel like with an internet browser or something. So the question probably is going to come up, why FileZilla? Well, there's a couple of unique advantages when we use FileZilla over a traditional web browser download um, interface. And for one, FileZilla is free. I know your web browser is probably free as well, but FileZilla is free. Um, the biggest advantage, I think, is the ability to actually pause a download and start it up later without losing any data. Um, this is really important if you lose your internet connection during a large download. We've all been there. The download gets to 90% and fails. Uh, and then you just kind of cry a little inside and start it back up and you're back at 0%. FileZilla is not going to do that to you. If you lose internet connection or something uh, halfway through the file download, uh, it will pick right back up where it left off once the connection is reestablished. Um, FileZilla allows you to download multiple files simultaneously and you can actually have multiple connection tabs open at one time so you can be connected uh, for example to Plan Mecca's FTP server as well as another FTP server at the same exact time so uh, very very handy tool um, I am uh, I advocate using this tool um, whenever I need to do a large download in fact this is how I get the majority of my software uh, from Plan Mecca is through the FTP site. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show you how to install FileZilla on your computer. I am on a Mac. Um, if you're on a Windows, you can follow along. Uh, it's going to be somewhat similar. Um, I may get around to posting a, a FileZilla installation for Windows computer, um, but for now, we're going to do it on Mac. So what you're going to do is open up your internet browser. I'm going to use Safari. I'm going to go down here and open that up. And you're going to go to the program FileZilla, it's automatically filling it in for me up top, but FileZilla-project.org. And when you open up the site, it's very simple looking, but you're going to click Download FileZilla Client. Okay. When you click that, it's going to give you another link to download. You're going to click. Um, it's going to go in your Downloads folder. Now, I have my Downloads folder right down here um, in my Mac bar down here, so I'm just going to click this and click on FileZilla Installer. Okay, It's going to probably prompt you that an application was downloaded from the internet. Just go ahead and click Open. Um, no big deal. We know where we got the file. We just downloaded it from FileZilla's website. Uh, go ahead and close your internet browser. We're done using that for now. And you'll see the installer right on the desktop. So uh, what you're going to do is go ahead and agree to the terms by clicking Agree. Um, FileZilla is a little annoying. It tries to uh, install an optional offer. We're just going to say no thanks. I don't want a Yahoo search bar and we're going to click next. Um, FileZilla will install. Uh, this is in real time. I haven't sped up the video at all. Um, it's a very quick install. It's essentially copying the contents of the download to your applications folder on a Mac. Um, once it is finished, we can go ahead and open up FileZilla and use it for the first time. So this is successfully installed. I'm going to click Done. And there we go. It's automatically open for me. And what it's asking for up top, you'll notice there's a spot for host. There's a spot for username and password and port. OK? Um, in order for you to get the Plan Mecca login information, uh, please contact Plan Mecca if you're a dealer. Um, and you can call our support line. And, uh, and actually just contact us and they'd be more than happy to give that to you. Unfortunately, since this is going out on the wild, wild web, um, I'm going to have to blur out the username and password. Um, I can tell you the host is ftp.com. 
PlanMeccaUSA.com. Um, and here we go. I'm going to type in the username and our password. So what this is doing here is this is accessing PlanMecca's FTP server directly. And um, what you're going to see here down at the bottom, on the left-hand side, this box here is going to be all the files that are on the local computer that we are accessing uh, or that we're using right now. And then over here on this box, it says not connected to any server. This is where all the FTP uh, files are going to show up once we log in. So let me go ahead and type in the password here real quick. Again, um, please feel free to call Plan Mecca um, to get the password, the username and password here. Um, you can tell FileZilla to remember the password, so you don't have to log in each and every time. Um, this is very handy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to click OK. And now top, you'll see it's trying to connect. And here we go. Here are all the files um, and the folder structure for the Plan Mecca server. I'm just expanding this file name section so I can see a little bit better. And you'll see, here we go. Here's all of the files and folders that are on Plan Mecca. So uh, let's just say you were on site and you needed to download um, Pro Max firmware, just as an example. What you would do um, is you would navigate to the... Uh, the folder here, there we go, firmware. I'm just going to double click. Um, and do notice on FileZilla, the way you go back one folder is up top. There's two dots. If you double click that, that will take you up one step. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. It was a little funny when I first used it. I was like, how do I go back a folder? That is how. So you're just going to double click firmware. Um, and then we're going to look for uh, Pro Max firmware. So there we go, Pro Max Pro Touch. I'm going to double click that. And it's going to open that. And then here we go. Pro Max Pro Touch uh, 361. That sounds good. Now, let's say I wanted to download that to my desktop. Uh, you'll quickly find out if you drag something out of FileZilla and try to drop it on your desktop, it's not going to do anything. Uh, the reason why is FileZilla is drag and drop compatible, but not right to your desktop. Okay, so, and the, the way I, I'm saying this is everything that's drag and drop inside of FileZilla actually has to stay inside of the program window here. So we can drag and drop this to our desktop, but the difference is we're going to navigate to our desktop here on the local computer side by double clicking. And now here's my desktop. Um, and this is just a representation of my folder structure of the local computer. So we're going to take it from the FTP site and we're going to drag it here. And now I am actually putting it on my desktop. Uh, you'll notice down at the bottom, it gives us a progress bar um, where we are loading the files. And just for fun, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to demonstrate FileZilla's ability to pause and restart a uh, download. So what I can do is I can actually go up here and I am going to, you know, for fun, I'm going to kill the internet here just to demonstrate. I'm going to turn Wi-Fi off. And of course, you can see the download has paused. All right. And now I'm going to come up top and turn my Wi-Fi back on. And you'll notice once the Wi-Fi connects back up, FileZilla connects from the server again, and whammo, we are right back to downloading that file, so no time lost. Um, I've also found that FileZilla is pretty quick with downloads um, compared to internet browsers. So this is just an example. We don't have to complete the download, but um, if you look up top, since I did drag it to my desktop over here um, in FileZilla, you'll notice that it's at the top right up here when it finishes downloading, then that uh, that firmware is completed and that is pretty much it. It's ready to be used. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. I hope this video has helped you and uh, keep learning out there. Have a good one.